How to Screen Male Patients for Potential Poor Cardiovascular Outcomes, a Urologist Perspective. You and we, Urologic Surgery and Wellness. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Jared J. Wallen, MD, board certified urologic surgeon and men's sexual health specialist. You can find us at www.uandwe.com, as well as on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Today, we are talking about modifiable risk factors or indicators, check engine lights, if you will, for potential problems in the male patient. Quite honestly, this, this talk is really for both patients, my colleagues, as well as primary care doctors who want to be at the cutting edge of prevention in their male patients. What do I mean by that? Quite honestly, most people and, and even some urologists don't always like to talk to male patients about their erections. Some, uh, some doctors don't like to necessarily talk to or screen patients for testosterone deficiency. Uh, and what I would tell you is that we're missing a huge check engine light or a warning sign of potential problems. What we know is that studies show that erectile dysfunction is essentially a three to five year check engine light or warning sign of potential cardiovascular, meaning heart problems. Why is that? Let's talk about it. So again, we'll, we'll bring in our penis model, right? So if our, this, is a, this, this is the male genitalia and in, in cross section, let's look at that a little bit closer. So again, uh, this is the penis here. You can see this is the corpora cavernosa along the, the top side here, and that actually stretches all the way out to the tip of the penis. And that corpora cavernosa is highly dependent on the heart and cardiovascular system to pump and fill it with blood for an erection to occur. We talk about that in a lot of our other videos. Remember the penis is essentially an elongated rod. It needs good blood flow in to fill it up and stretch it out and make it stiff. And it needs little valves to close to trap the blood there to maintain that erection long enough for sexual activity. Now, in order for us to have a good function and good rigidity, we need the blood vessels freely flowing and open, and we need the heart pumping well as a muscle, right? And so again, looking at the cross section of our penis model, if you look at these little blood vessels on the inside, those blood vessels in the penis, the cavernosal arteries, are essentially two millimeters in size. The blood vessels that lead to your heart, the muscle that pumps blood throughout your, your entire system and brings nutrients and oxygen and et cetera to your tissues are four millimeters in size on average. So you can see right away, the blood vessels in the penis are essentially about half the size of the blood vessels in the heart. Again, about two millimeters bringing blood flow to the penis, about four millimeters bringing blood flow on average to your heart. Um, and so from that standpoint, you can easily see where if you have little plaque buildups, which is commonly called coronary artery disease, uh, that's specifically meaning in the heart, but you can get peripheral vascular disease similar uh, anywhere peripherally in your body, in the legs, in the penis, et cetera. And those little, basically what it is, is little plaque buildups on the inside of these little arteries, right? And so you can see very quickly, we know that if you have a 70% blockage in the blood vessel, that could lead to what we call ischemia or lack of blood flow, lack of nutrients, lack of oxygen, getting to whatever organ you're talking about. Whether that's the heart, that's a heart attack. Whether that's the brain, that's a stroke. Specifically for the penis, that brings on erectile dysfunction. Again, you need blood flow in to fill that puppy up and stretch it out and, and get, make it nice and stiff to be able to be active sexually. So again, the blood vessels in the heart are twice the size, two times the size as the little blood vessels in the penis. And so from that standpoint, it, you can easily see that if you have 50% blockage in the heart, again, I told you already, 70% blockage usually causes pathology or causes problems. If you have a 50% blockage in the four millimeter vessel in the heart, blood should still be able to freely flow and it shouldn't really cause major issues. But that same size blockage is actually going to block the entire little vessel in the penis. And so again, three to five year check engine light, you have erectile dysfunction, you have issues with stiffness, talk to your, talk to your primary doctor, talk to your physician, 
talk to your urologist, make an appointment with me. I'm happy to chat with you if nobody else will. But the reality is, is that's a check engine light for potential cardiovascular problems. And so from that standpoint, again, asking your patients about the stiffness of their erection, if their sexual life is, is okay, you know, it, a lot of times patients aren't going to bring it up themselves. And so if you're not asking, they ain't going to tell you. But the reality is, is you're missing an opportunity to screen them for potential warning check engine lights that could lead to other big problems down the road. So again, we, we tend to understand that after the age of about 40 to 45, both men and women tend to lose hormones, whether it's thyroid hormone, whether it's testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, all these different hormones that our body normally makes that controls our processes tend to start to slide downwards as we get older. You know, a lot of times that these can be related to a lot of the problems that happen as we get older. And we'll talk about that a little bit more, in, especially in the setting of testosterone here in just a minute. But specifically, if patients are even ha either having symptoms of low testosterone, like irritability, fatigue, you know, erectile dysfunction, sexual dysfunction, infertility, bone pain, etc., then, you know, checking their labs can certainly be helpful to better understand if this could potentially be a problem for them. And specifically, in the absence of symptoms, the AUA guidelines from 2018 still recommend for those folks who have an unexplained anemia, bone density loss, diabetes, exposure to chemotherapy, exposure to testicular radiation, HIV or AIDS, chronic narcotic or pain medication use, male infertility, pituitary dysfunction, which is a little gland in the brain, or chronic corticosteroid use, you should actually screen these patients even in absence of symptoms for potential low testosterone. Again, this is a huge problem. Hormones control a lot of our body processes from our brain function to our heart function. Again, the heart is a big muscle. Remember, testosterone is very important for muscles. Uh, it also is very important in, in maintaining the, the density or the strength of our bones. Uh, as well as, you know, controlling anxiety, depression symptoms and, and helping us, you know, with fatigue and, and stamina and et cetera. And so from that standpoint, very, very important to measure low testosterone. The 2018 AUA guidelines specifically recommend that patients are told that low testosterone is actually an independent risk factor for poor heart or cardiovascular outcomes. And so what I mean by that is that there's multiple different studies that show that low testosterone is an independent risk factor for bad heart outcomes. What are, the, what are bad heart outcomes? We're talking about heart attack, stroke, death, hypertension, all these different things are certainly uh, potentially related to hormone loss as we get older. And so specifically in the, in the setting of low testosterone, you know, the, the 2018 AUA guidelines goes through and, and talks about all these different studies that have been done. And I'm just going to give you a short little summary of those because we could spend hours upon hours reviewing all of them, but obviously we don't have hours upon hours. So specifically, there's, there's a meta-analysis of seven different studies that basically shows that compared to folks who have normal testosterone levels, if you have a low testosterone level, you're at an increased risk of heart attack. There's a 12 studies that were summarized and show that if you have low testosterone levels, you're at an increased risk of stroke. And there's actually 33 studies that specifically show that if you have low testosterone, you're at an increased risk of having hypertension. What is that? That's that high blood pressure that certainly can lead to a lot of other different problems and certainly does lead to a lot of initiation of medications, number one. But number two, remember a lot of those hyper, high blood pressure medications can certainly affect your erectile function. And so it's somewhat of a vicious cycle where you know all these different things are interrelated, right? And so ultimately also, there's a, a combination of 21 studies that show that low testosterone can lead to what we call dyslipidemia. What is that? That's basically a syndrome where your, your body produces lipids in different forms and certainly can potentially start to create those little plaques that are in these blood vessels that we talked about. You know, again, the more plaque in the blood vessel, the more blockage that's potentially there and potentially the more dysfunction, especially if you get more, uh, greater than 70% blockage. Beyond that, there's also studies that show that low testosterone had increased risk of cardiac death. So 
death related to heart problems. Again, all this stuff is related. So again, erectile dysfunction, low testosterone, both of them are check engine lights for potential bad heart or cardiovascular outcomes in your patients. If you're a patient, certainly contact your doctor. If your doctor is unwilling to talk about it, contact a urologist or someone like myself and, and get in and get checked out. If you're a primary care doctor, what I would tell you is that the reality is if you're not asking your patients about the stiffness of their erection and you're not checking them for low testosterone in, in the setting of symptoms or in the setting of all those syndromes that we talked about that are recommended to screen them for low blood levels, even in the absence of symptoms, then to some extent, you're probably doing your patients a disservice. Again, this is Jared J. Wallen, MD, board certified urologic surgeon and men's sexual health specialist. Please reach out to us, uh, like, subscribe on the YouTube channel. That certainly helps us increase our visibility and help more patients. That's, that's our main goal. And you know, check out our links on the next page. Thank you all and have a blessed day. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see all the links to all of our websites, including uandwe.com, as well as YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you all for watching. You and we, Urologic Surgery and Wellness, coming soon to Sarasota, Florida.